Hello everyone. Today we shall take up a poem from the textbook of New Gulmohar Reader for class 6. The name of the poem is Her Head and is composed by the poetess Joan Murray. Before discussing the poem, let us first know some things about the poetess Joan Murray. She was born in New York City in the year 1945. She is an American poet, a playwright and an editor. She has studied in the New York University and lives in upstate New York. She has achieved many awards. Some of her significant words are the same water, queen of the mist, swimming for the ark, this dancing on the edge, etc. Now let us move to the poem. We shall have a reading of the poem first and then we'll discuss about it in details. So the poem is Her Head by Joan Murray near Ikuvukeni in Natal. South Africa, a woman carries water on her head. After a year of drought, when one child in three is at risk of death, she returns from a distant well carrying water from her on her head. The pumpkins are gone, the tomatoes withered, yet the woman carries water on her head. The cattle kraals are empty, the goats gaunt, no milk now for children, but she is carrying water on her head. The engineers have reversed the river, those with power can keep their power, but one woman is carrying water on her head. In the homelands where the dusty crowds Watch the empty roads or water trucks. One woman trusts herself with treasure and carries water on her head. The sun does not dissuade her, nor the dried earth that blows against her, as she carries the water on her head. In a huge and dirty pail, with an idle handle resting on a narrow can, this woman is carrying water on her head. This woman who girds her neck with safety pins. This one who carries water on her head. Trusts her own head to bring to her people what they need now. Between life and death, she is carrying them water on her head. So, let us first know the background of the poem. This poem is about the rural drought stricken area in South Africa. Here the poet notices a woman who is poor and very ordinary. She is carrying water on her head from a distant well. Because of the drought the people of that area are desperate and starving. However, this woman shows extraordinary courage and doesn't give up to the unkind circumstances. She single-handedly fetches water for her family's survival despite various challenges. This is what the poem tells us about. Now, let us, uh, let us go through the poem stanza-wise. Let us see the first stanza first. Near Ikuvukeni in Natal, South Africa, a woman carries water on her head. After a year of drought, when one child in three is at risk of death, she returns from a distant well carrying water on her head. So here it is given that the drought or famine as we can say, has severely damaged the region of Ikuvukeni, which is located in Natal, South Africa. The entire settlement is hugely affected, but one woman catches the speaker's attention as she fetches water on her head. Fetching means 
going and bringing something back. So this woman is bringing water from a far parched land and she carries water from a distant well in order to make her family survive. So she is bringing the water for her family. The cruel drought has lasted for a whole year and has made the people starving to such an extent that one of her three children is at the risk of death. So this woman has three children at home and out of, the, out of those, one is starving and very very sick. So um, she has taken the responsibility to bring water for him uh, despite all the problems and hurdles that comes across her way. So now let's move on to the second stanza. The pumpkins are gone, the tomatoes withered, yet the woman carries water on her head. The kettle kraals are empty, the goats gaunt, no milk now for children, but she is carrying water on her head. In this stanza, the effect of the famine is detailed. Okay, it is said that the pumpkins and the tomatoes. So um, basically, it means that vegetables and crops they are completely gone and destroyed due to the famine. Still, the woman is determined to keep her family alive. The cattle kraals, kraals here, um, kraal. The word kraals here means the shelter for animals. So the cattle are starved to death and hence their shelter or uh, as we can say kraals are empty. The goats have also become very thin and sick. So there is no source of milk left for small children. As we know that small babies, small children, they feed on uh, milk basically. So since there is no uh, cattle left, every cattle, all the cattle has died. So there is no source of milk left for the children to you know, have milk. Uh, that is how the famine has affected the settlement of Ikurukeni. Now let us move on to the third stanza. The engineers have reversed the river, those with power can keep their power. But one woman is carrying water on her head. Now in the third stanza, it is mentioned that the engineers, they have, they have reversed the river. Okay, uh, now reversing the river means uh, that the powerful and the elite people of the society has changed the course of the river. They have changed the route of the river. The direction of the river has been changed uh, by the powerful and the urban people. Okay, the people who have uh, power, who have money, who have all sorts of uh, privileges, they have decided to change the direction in which the river used to flow earlier. And uh, one might think that why they would do so. They do so in order to extract many, many benefits from the river. Okay? They do not think about the people who will suffer because of this. They just think about their own benefits and they do this kind of things. Uh, the benefits they, that they will get from uh, changing the direction of the rivers could be of many kinds. It could be the water itself, it could be the food, it could be the electricity, etc. It could the electricity as we uh, as we know that what from water we, uh, hydroelectricity could be produced. So in order to have the benefit of that, we, uh, this engineers and other politicians and everyone uh, in power, they must have done this. Moreover, uh, this reversing of river is one of the main causes of famine for the people of uh, Ikunukeni. However, this unfair political system cannot stop the woman, this woman, to get water for her people. She doesn't care about the political system. She doesn't care about what is happening in the world, how much problems are there around her. 
she is just determined to save her family so now let's move on to the fourth stanza in the in the homelands where the dusty crowds watch the empty roads for water trucks one woman trusts herself with treasure and carries water on her head so further in the homeland the homeland means the native village or area wherever this woman lives in so in that homeland there are people who wait in crowds they keep waiting for long hours on the roads for the water trucks to come okay the weather has become very hot and dry and people wait under the scorching sun for the water but this woman she refuses to wait for the trucks she refuses for any kind of help from anybody and she went uh, she went far away in a distant wells to bring water herself all by herself in her place in her homeland water has become such an important and precious thing that it has been referred to as treasure okay the treasure in the third line means no jewelry or money but it means uh, the precious water so now uh, let us move on to the fifth stanza the sun does not dissuade her nor the dried earth that blows against her as she carries the water on her head in a huge and dirty pail with an idle handle resting on a narrow can this woman is carrying water on her head so here the poet says that the woman is not discouraged by the scorching heat of the sun she is not ready to give up at any cost not even when the dry wind blows and carries dust on her she is completely covered in dust she is walking with a heavy bucket on her head under such a hot sun but she is her determination and courage is is not shaken she faces everything with her determination and courage and does not give up for uh, for her family basically so she carries water in a bucket on her head she doesn't hold the bucket by the handle but carries it on her head she puts a small can on her head for the support and then keeps the bucket on top of it so this is how she carries the water on her head now let us come to the sixth stanza uh this woman who girds her neck with safety pins this one who carries water on her head trusts her own head to bring to her people what they need now between life and death she is carrying them water on her head in this stanza the description of the woman uh the description of the woman's poverty actually and the urgency of her family is described it is mentioned that she girds her neck which means she wears a necklace that is made of safety pins it shows that the woman is poor and deprived uh, and she um, and the jewelry that she wears is not uh, is made of very cheap safety pins it is also mentioned that she trusts her own head which means that she has faith in herself and is strong enough to take the responsibilities of her entire family alone she has refused she has completely refused to wait for help from anybody and is completely dependent on herself for the survival of her family this family that is uh, that is in very very urgent need of water water has become such a matter of life and death for them and this woman alone is trying to solve the problems for the entire family so uh, the poem is basically about the cruel famine the unfamiliar the unfair political system and 
uh, how it has affected the poor section of the society. It shows how a woman is so courageous and strong that she doesn't give up at any cost for her family. I hope this video is beneficial for you to understand the poem better. Thank you for watching.